Brothers and sisters, are we hungry to listen to Jesus at some length for a long period of time? This is what we hear in the gospel for Sunday, uh, just gone for the 16th week in ordinary time. We hear that Jesus, after telling the disciples because they haven't eaten, that they need a rest and that they're to go away to a lonely place. So he commands them to go to rest. Um, but the crowds figure out where they are going and they, they, they run basically because they get there before the disciples and the Lord reach to this place where they're going to this lonely place. And the Lord takes pity on them. He sees that they are sheep without a shepherd and he decides to continue to teach them at some length. Jesus never gives himself half-heartedly. He gives himself completely. Despite in his humanity, his fatigue, his tiredness, he continues to give himself completely and utterly to the hunger of, of these souls who, who are looking for the truth, who, who recognize in Jesus the divine words, who recognize in Jesus uh, a wisdom that they had probably never seen on earth before, or never heard from any other rabbi or any other teacher. And so they hunger for Christ. And so their, their zeal for him, they're willing to leave, you know, wherever they were to, to find Christ, to meet Christ. And this is a principle in the scriptures. It's a biblical principle for our lives. Are we in touch with our hunger to hear the word of God? Brothers and sisters, we are more privileged in one sense than those disciples. Because we have Jesus, we have his word in the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, we have to believe, and this is our faith, that the word of God is alive and active. That even though it's written down 2,000 years ago, that when we meditate on the scriptures, we actually come to Jesus himself. We're actually there with the living Jesus. Through our faith, we make contact with him. And he speaks to us. He communicates to us. No less real than he was with all these disciples back 2000 years ago. Jesus promised us that he is with us all the days of our life. And so do we have this hunger for Jesus? Do we make time every day to listen to his word? The true adorers, the true lovers of Jesus are willing to, to, to sacrifice everything else to spend time with him. That's what love is. And, and all of us, including myself, we have to take a continual check on ourselves every day. Am I letting other desires into my heart? Am I, am I being distracted? Am I filling up that hunger for what is real and true and beautiful, aka Jesus in my life, with things of the world? With, with other desires that, that, that drain me of that vital life and energy that should be channeled towards communing with God. And, you know, it's so key to be able to spend time with the word and with Jesus so that we could learn how to listen to the voice of the Lord. We're living in times of great confusion, a uh, great confusion in society in a sense that where it's not easy to see how clear, um, we should live our Christian life because so many Christians are Christian in name. Uh, so many Catholics, we're, we're Catholic in name. We're, we're, we, we, many Catholics are, are without a shepherd, I suppose, uh, without a clear witness, without a witness of the true authentic Christian life. And so my fear is for myself and for, for our generation is that we would assume that what we see is in the Catholic Church at the moment as being Catholic is actually the Catholic Church. Um, and the only way to really discern that is by sticking close to the saints and sticking close to, to those, uh, to the wisdom that they have by reading spiritual reading, by, by also by, you know, discerning the right voices in the church that we should listen to. Uh, this is something I have to do as well, uh, that, that we spend time in prayer to, above all, be familiar with Christ. So 
if we're familiar with Christ and we're able to sit and let him teach us at length by meditating on his word, then we will have a much better chance at seeing more clearly the, the areas of our life that are not under his reign, that are not part of his lordship, and that therefore we have to repent and clear away and bring under him. Because often what we're seeing in the church is spiritual mediocrity, lukewarmness is, 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 could be sometimes seen as a ideal that we're working towards because we've forgotten, in fact, what we really should be working towards. And so, brothers and sisters, the only way to recapture this is for us to really be steeped in his word, steeped in spiritual reading, reading the lives of the saints and, and discerning those witnesses around us that, that can point us to Christ. And may the Lord bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.